The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Welcome to the Tea Room. We have a update today with Susan Daniels with Daniels Private Investigators and she has some news on the Social Security number that President Barack Obama is using. We covered the story, oh, I guess two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and just wanted to give you guys an update as to how the investigation is progressing. Susan, welcome. Oh, thank you, Helen. Happy to talk to you again. Yeah, it's always good to talk to you, Susan. <laughs> always good. Um, so fill us in. I've got uh, two items in front of me. One is a response to a letter you sent to the Social Security Administration with regards to the Connecticut Social Security number that the President is using. And the other item is a certification of a Social Security number that follows President Obama's by three numbers and wanted to ask you to talk to us. Let's start with the Social Security certification first. The Paul Michael Graziano who applied for a Social Security number in, it looks like, Trumbull, Connecticut. And why don't you fill the listeners in on this certification and what it means and how it affects the investigation. Well, his number is actually four numbers after Obama's country. Uh, he, his number ends in, uh, Obama's ends in 4425, and Graziano's ends in 4429. Um, the reason his information is available is because he is deceased. If you look on the application, he applied in, um, it was March of 77, and also it looks like the number was issued the 28th of March in 77. Now, Thomas Wood, who was one number before Obama's number, which is 4424, and he is also deceased, he also got his, uh, was assigned his Social Security number in March 77. So I think that we can unequivocally say that Obama's alleged Social Security number was issued to him in March of 77, since before and after him both got theirs that month. Now, the thing that's interesting is in March of 77, Obama, who was born in August of 61, would have been 15 years old. And at 15 years old, he was in high school in Hawaii, nowhere near the state of Connecticut. And there is no way that he applied for and got a social security number in Connecticut. Well, I don't know how you could do that. What, there, there, it can't be done. Not only that, if, if he had actually done that, uh, there is, a, you, you will see from uh, both forms, from, from Thomas Wood and, and uh, Paul Graziano, they are like handwritten cards that you fill out with your information, where you live, you know, all kinds of pertinent information about yourself, including your address. Now, there, if Obama has this Connecticut Social Security number, the Social Security Administration would have an identical card for him, handwritten, filled out, and with a Connecticut address on it. And I don't think they got one. I don't either. There, there has been, after our uh, initial interview, uh -huh. there was some question as to whether his father, Barack Obama Sr., may have been living in Connecticut in, uh, now we know, March of 1977, and you and I both know that is it, that fact is incorrect. Would you like to address that? Oh, I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to because I never watched Bill O'Reilly because I think he's a jerk and a pompous jerk at that. And I was flipping stations the very night some woman had sent in a query about Obama having a Connecticut Social Security number. And with complete authority, O'Reilly says, well, his father lived in Connecticut for several years, and he probably got it that way. 
and that was an outright lie. And I, it took a lie to such an extent that they scrubbed it from the podcast. And O'Reilly didn't show up on his, uh, wasn't on his show for the next two days. That was, a, that was a blatant lie. Barack Obama's senior, and I'm assuming that's actually Obama Jr.'s father, although there's a lot of theories about whether he is or not. But Barack Obama Sr. left the United States in June of 65. He came back for one visit in December of 71 to, and went to Hawaii. He then returned after a month, I think, to, to Kenya and never came back again. Uh, there is no mention of Connecticut in the, uh, Obama's book, Dreams from My Father. He never mentions it anywhere. And I don't believe he ever was in the state when he was running for election or had been elected. Fascinating. Well, now, the other item uh, with regards to an update is you sent off three letters to one to the Social Security Administration, another to the Department of Justice, and a third letter, I believe, to Selective Service. No, actually, I sent, I never sent anything to Selective Service. I sent two to the Department of Justice, Eric Holder, and his, his whoever was in charge of criminal investigations. I, I, I don't have the name off the top of my head. And I did the same thing with Social Security. I sent it to, to Astro, who was in charge, and uh, one of his minions. I wanted to make sure that somebody in one of these, either one of these organizations got a letter. And I got a response today. Tell us about that. Which surprises me because I probably sent those off more than a month ago. But uh, the, the letter I received is some guy who is acting associate commissioner, whatever that is. That's what this guy is. That's his title. And um, it's hilarious because he writes, after reviewing the information you provided, we disagree with your conclusion that a person's social security number depends upon the address of residence, period. <laughs> and that's his entire explanation. Well, you know, I have that letter in front of me. And as I was sharing with you earlier, I have never seen a letter come back from any kind of governmental agency, whether it's federal, state, or local, where a citizen is challenging or asking for particular questions to be answered. And in this case, the Social Security number um, that Barack Obama is using. And to receive a letter like this, simply just saying they disagree with you without citing any kind of code, without citing any kind of, of factual evidence of any kind that states where you are wrong. Instead, they just simply say, we disagree. I know. It's hilarious. I mean, they don't send me to any section of, you know, of the rules of the government. I mean, they, we, we disagree. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. It's, I, I think it's stunning. I think it speaks volumes. Well, I think it does too. And I think, it, I think, that I think they would have been better off not sending me this letter. Because it is so weak that it actually supports my position. Yes, it does. I do agree with that. I do. And I and I think any person who just any individual that is looking to their governmental sources to provide them with information that's contrary to information they have, to receive a letter where it's just simply a disagreement is is just beyond reasonable. I, I'm flummoxed. Um, so, do you think you're going to hear anything from the DOJ? Oh, no. I didn't expect to ever hear anything from anybody. But you know what? I wanted to put them on. I mean, I didn't want them to ever be able to say, well, nobody asked us to, to investigate. I, didn't, I wanted to be able to prove at some point in the future that I had made a legitimate inquiry 
of both sections of the government. Fortunately, he sent this back because what he does is verify the fact that I had sent a letter asking for an investigation. And I think that was really nice of him. I do too. Well, we need to we need to do a tribute to this fellow. <laughs> <laughs> well, his name is Frank Duro. So. I think we're going to call him the hero of the week. <laughs> <laughs>
that line, but when they started requiring the Social Security uh, numbers on the uh, IRS forms, that's when they, that's when they made it mandatory. Huh. Uh, well, and like I said, that's certainly what the gentleman shared with me when we chatted. Now, we also have another document that you have discovered or has come your way. It says that since 1972, Social Security numbers have been issued centrally, and the area number and Social Security numbers assigned since then correspond to the resident's location of the applicant as indicated on the application for the SSN, which means where you were living when you applied for it is where it is, uh, it is assigned to you. So again, he would have had to have been living in Connecticut to get the numbers that he is using. And since he was 15, I don't think so. So... The Hawaii number begins with... I believe it's 585. Let me see. I'm looking. It, it actually, it's 575. Five, yeah, 575, 576. Uh -huh. right? His half sister starts with 575. And then Connecticut is 040 to 049. Right. So let me make sure that I understand all that you've shared with us today to give us an update is first we now have narrowed down um, the time in which this social security number would have become or come into the possession of Barack Obama and that would have been sometime in March of 1977. Yeah, Okay, so his number, 4425, is sandwiched between right. a Mr. Thomas Wood, who is deceased, and this Mr. Michael Graziano, who is also deceased, right. indicating that the number in which Obama has in his possession and has been using for 25 years was received or handed out, assigned, whatever word you want to use, sometime in March of 1977. So we now have that confirmed. Now, moving right along, you also wrote a letter to the Social Security Administration to make sure that you documented and you created a paper trail showing that you, as a uh, private investigator, was making a formal request of the Social Security Administration to uh, look into this peculiarity that is surrounding this number that Barack Obama has and has been using for 25 years. And you received a letter stating precisely <laughs> that they disagreed with my conclusion. And they cited no code, they cited no law, they cited nothing. They just simply said they disagreed with you. <laughs> okay, so now we've, with Social Security Administration... I, I sent it to the Department of Justice, too, but they never responded. We've now narrowed the application when any individual who is applying for a Social Security number before the age of 12 has to appear at a local Social Security office in person in order to attain that Social Security number, or yes. in order to apply for a Social Security number, correct? Yep. Okay. If you were 12 or older, you must apply in person. He would have been 15 in March 77. So he would have had to, to secure this Connecticut Social Security number, he would have had to have walked in to a Social Security office in the state of Connecticut, right. and he would have had to have shown that he had an address right. in Connecticut, because the second historical document that we that you have brought to our attention is that the resident location of the applicant has to correspond to. Let me see. It has to correspond to the numbers that are assigned. And it would have had to be there for a while because. They then I, I believe mailed these things out. I don't I don't know I don't know that they gave to you immediately, but um, it would 
seem reasonable that you would take your application in, they would look it over, look at your supporting documents, and uh, then send it to you. He would he he was in high school in Hawaii. I can't see him flying to uh, Connecticut, establishing a residence, and applying for the number there. <laughs> he was this doesn't compute. No, no, it, I, I I would agree with that. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add, Susan? Uh, no, that, that's all I have for now. Well, very good. Well, as always, the tea room uh, appreciates. All of the work you're doing, it's it's and and all of the other individuals that are contacting you and privately sharing information with you. I just a huge kudos to all of you, and know that the tea room will continue to provide updates um, with the work you're doing, so that uh, we we keep a record that folks can refer back to, especially with the upcoming elections. So with that, I thank you so much, and everybody have a great day. Oh, thank you, Helen. I always appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.